So in this video, we're going to look at uh, an application of uh, nonlinear differential equations. Okay, so that application is uh, the predator-prey equations. And so the standard model uh, that's considered first is the Lotka-Volterra model. Okay, so I've talked a little bit about this in class. So uh, just to refresh your memory, the model goes like this. We have two species, X and Y, where Y uh, preys on X. All right, and so the assumptions that we make are that uh, uh, the prey x grows exponentially, okay, and that is given by this ax term, okay, and that the predator um, decays exponentially, and that's given by this minus cy term, okay, and of course the a and the c were considered as positive parameters, okay, and now because of the um, predation, there's an interaction between uh, the predator and the prey that's given by these nonlinear terms. Uh, uh, in the dx dt equation, it's given by the minus bxy, okay, so that the interaction hurts the prey. And then for the, the predator, that interaction term is plus dxy. And so that interaction will, will help the predator survive, right? So these are the equations, and what we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at specific values of a, b, c, and d and do. Um, some of that analysis that involves um, looking, computing a Jacobian and then, uh, or finding critical points, uh, computing the Jacobian, and then looking at linear systems that uh, hopefully represent what's going on near those uh, critical points. Okay. So the example we'll look at uh, is dx dt equals x times 1 minus 0 0.5y. And the y dt equals uh, y times minus 0 0.75 plus 0 0.25x. Okay, so this is with um, x and y factored out of these equations, or if I distribute the x and write it as you saw it previously. system looks like this. Okay. So the first thing to do to analyze the system is to find critical points. So um, we look at our set of equations. So in the first equation, either x is going to be 0 or y is going to be 2, right? So, so if x is 0, and if I plug that into the second equation, uh, well, if x is zero, it turns out that y must be zero as well. So certainly this is a critical point. This certainly makes sense. I mean, if there's no prey and no predator, okay, nothing's gonna happen. All right, um, another critical point is, well, now if y is two, okay, so notice that satisfies the first equation. So I plug y equals two into the second equation, now, what's in parentheses must be zero. And so you can see that if x is three, we get zero in parentheses. So the other critical point is three, two. Okay. All right, so now let's um, compute the Jacobian and do uh, the analysis that we've talked about previously. So the Jacobian is, so we take our first equation, dx dt and we differentiate with respect to x. So we get 1 minus 0.5y. And then we differentiate with respect to y. Let's say here it's minus 0.5x. And in the second row of the Jacobian, now we differentiate uh, dy dt with respect to x. And we get 0.25y. And then in this entry, minus 0 0.75 plus 0 0.25x. Okay. And so now what we're going to do is we are going to analyze the critical points um, uh, by computing the Jacobian. So you can see here pretty clearly, and I, I guess what I'd like to do is I want to evaluate the Jacobian at these points. Like I have those matrices. Some of the board. So if you evaluate the Jacobian at 0, 0, uh, notice 
we get this nice looking matrix that's diagonal. Uh, that looks like this. Okay. Um, and if we evaluate the Jacobian at 3, 2, uh, let's see. <clears throat> At three, two, so that entry is zero. This entry is minus 1.5. This entry, 0.25 times two is 0 0.5. And that entry there is zero. Okay. So uh, now I'll erase four and we can look at each of these questions. So for the critical point zero, zero, we want to consider the system that looks like this. Okay. And for this system, uh, since our matrix A is diagonal, okay, which means that only the entries on the main diagonal, which is this diagonal here, are non-zero. Um, that's nice because we can write down the eigenvalues right away. The eigenvalues are listed right on the main diagonal. Okay. And we can even write down corresponding eigenvectors, <coughs> which um, you, you can go through the work if you'd like. Uh, but B1 is equal to the vector 1, 0, and B2 is equal to the vector 0, 1. Right? So um, if we were to actually zoom in on uh, the face portrait for this system, you would see the following. <clears throat> so um, if you, so we're at the origin, and I'm only going to basically look at the picture in the first quadrant, because that's all that really matters for our predator-prey system here. So um, in the one zero direction, so that means going this way, the eigenvalue is positive, so we have an arrow pointing like this. Okay. And uh, for the eigenvector zero one that we that's going up, we have the eigenvalue minus 0 0.75. So that means that we would actually approach uh, the origin. Okay. And so um, in the first quadrant, all trajectories near that point would look like this. Okay, so it's um, one of the four regions um, uh, of a saddle point. Okay, because we have a saddle point here from the fact that the eigenvalues are different signs. Okay, so I'll just draw one more trajectory here. But that's what uh, the phase portion would look like near the point. And, and you could fill in the details for the other three quadrants, but like I said, those are, aren't physically relevant. So now let's look at the other fixed point, or critical point. Sometimes the critical points are called fixed points. So um, at 3, 2, so now we look at the system. That looks like this. And uh, when we go to compute uh, the eigenvalues, so the characteristic equation is lambda squared. Okay. And then it turns out to be plus, um, I believe it's 0 0.75 uh, equal to 0. Okay. So what you see here is that we're going to get um, imaginary roots, right? So uh, lambda is equal to plus or minus root 3 over 2 i. And so if you remember from linear systems, what this means is that we have what's called a center, right? Now, um, and I haven't mentioned this, but in, in the theory for nonlinear differential equations, if the um, linearization, which is what we're doing here, we're sort of we're linearizing the equations near uh, critical points. Um, if we get a center, it means that 
uh, we can't quite rely on uh, the linear system to tell us what's really going on. We have to do a little bit more work. In any case, what you'll see is if you do plot the phase portrait, you'll get something that does actually look like a center, but we would have to do more work to really prove that. Okay. Uh, so here, um, this, as I said, leads to a center. And if we were to look um, closely, and um, I encourage you to actually look at figures in the book or to use p-plane, uh, if we go to the point three two, um, in the face portrait, so if I plot this point here, uh, we would get something that looks like a center. And the trajectories actually um, are going uh, counterclockwise. So this is how we would do that, uh, um, what, what we would call the linearization of the critical.